guys welcome back this video we're going to focus on getting this guy finished you see where that poly bib the angle it used to be on focus you see the the angle that bib used to be on it's creating way too much body roll so i've decided to steepen the angle a bit probably done about oh, all right Somewhere close to 15 revisions of this lure. Well, not revisions, but changing things. Take it for a swim test. Change something else. Take it for a swim test. <clears throat> so I've tried a, a bit of a square build type shape on it. I painted these up too, just so they look fancy. Practice painting. So that one's unweighted. Swims all right now. Bit of a coffin shaped lip on that one. He's weighted and he slowly sinks. Painted him as well. Bit of a dirty looking shad colour if it'll focus. So yeah. We'll get into it and go through the process with this because I got rid of a lot of the old footage because I've changed so much on it. So we'll start from scratch and we'll get up to this point and then we'll chuck some paint on it. Alrighty, so in case you're wondering, I'm purposely pushing what I thought I knew would work. Small 12mm block of wood, it's Maranti, the red Maranti again. So 12mm thick, I think, went 70mm long, nose to tail and I'm pretty sure it was 30mm that way. So it's not not very buoyant once you start getting all the hardware and whatnot in there there's not much room for lead but that one there literally only got one and a half grams of lead in it and it sinks now well, let's get into it this is just a little template i've drawn up very similar to Similar shape to the 105mm minnow I've done close to the start of the YouTube videos. Just very short. I think they're 105mm, yeah, this one's only 70mm. I just like that profile, looks good. <clears throat> I prefer more of a, a deeper body on a lure. Shape pretty basic. Toe point right at the front, hook hanger, hook hanger. Now, got a new toy to play with too. Picked up an old second hand bandsaw. Spent most of yesterday tuning it up so it actually runs right because it didn't run. Just kept throwing the blades off, so we'll see how we go cutting this guy. The only real tight radius is probably the one around there, so see how it goes.
going to mark out the center line. Top profile is very basic on these. You can see the literally only tapered to there. And the front's only tapered back to there. The rest of it's all square. Obviously rounded over top and bottom, but square sides. You can sort of see it there. 30 mil on the back. 15 on the front. So 30 mil up, I'll square it off. Roughly 15 mil up, I'll square it off. I'm literally just going to taper from that line to that line, up at an angle, like that, front and back. Once we get to that point, the real square blocky point of it. Let's sit her up on the belt sander and we'll round it over a little. Alrighty, so all I've done is set the table to 45 degrees and I'll round over his back edges. It's much easier than doing it by hand. That's the point we're at to. I'm using that center ridge line, that uh, center line. Just making sure my sandings are reasonably straight. Top and bottom. Bottom's a bit close on the belly there. I'm gonna fix that up. Just got some eye holes in it. Going with an eight mil, eight millimeter glass eye in this one. was what are we got 80 grit 80 grit emery does some pretty quick work of shaping lures so with the, the 80 grit I'm literally just getting the um, ridges out of the side then I'll come back in with a 180 grit and smooth it Grit. You can see that tail piece shaped up pretty pretty easy after the bandsaw and the sander. 
I'm gonna come back with some super fine sandpaper and get that smooth. Pretty much in. Obviously still need to do a bit of hand sanding. I'll go down to 240 grit just try and get these couple of little little bridges, ridges out of the side. I'll we'll sand to 240 probably I don't know, we'll either throw a nail in him or put the hardware in him. Or throw him on the floor. Uh, so 240. Plain old white sandpaper. So you can see the profile on these two lures. This is the one I'm just making now, sanding. That was a tiny little bit deeper. And it hasn't got such a pointy nose so I've changed that template a little bit just to bring that point of the nose up that's where the screw eyes got to go otherwise it won't swim properly but these guys are already made and they work so we're using them all right I'm using the screw in Long one for the tail because there's a lot less wood up there and a couple of short ones up the front. Hopefully I can do this without making a mess. I usually make a mess doing this. Whoop. Speak of the devil. First one I've had crack there. It's probably because I drilled through the eye socket and it's all on the same plane, but I don't reckon I'll go like sealing with this black super glue. Let's find out. Never done it before. Hopefully it'll hold that crack together at the nose a bit better. Still gets hot. I'd say that works pretty good. First time I've ever sealed one with black super glue, so we'll see what happens. Obviously wait for that to dry and give it a give it a sanding. Actually make a nice nude lure. Use the black super glue to stain the wood and then just clear coat it. Interesting. I wonder if anyone's done that before. Alright. While that's drying, we'll cut the lip. Alrighty, so all I've got here is a bit of two millimeter polycarbonate. I know that edge and that edge are straight. I'm gonna work from one of them. So using that vinyl cutter I've got, I just drew up a couple of lip patterns. Going for a little round, round bill, round bib, whatever you want to call him. I'm literally just gonna peel that off. Get rid of that. I suppose it doesn't really matter where I stick this, whether it's on a square edge or not. It'll just be easy with a square edge. I'm going to use that as my guide and cut to them because I'm prepping up a second lure here too. 
Only painting one tonight. cutting stuff that small it's tiny it's like 18 millimeter circle Get some glue onto them, might duck inside, have some dinner, and then I'll come back and paint. It looks like it's hanging out a long way, but it's only because it's going into that eye cavity. Alright, here we are. Sorry, got a little bit of double sided tape. Eight millimeter glass eyes. Stick them down to the tape. I've had a few before, they were still wet with paint when I went to paint them and they flipped over and ruined it. I had to wipe it off, start again. So as I cycle through the colours, if I come across a colour that's going to go under the eyes, I'll squirt them up. They're ready to go. Very first step is putting the pupil on, so I might actually do that first because I don't have a need for opaque black for the rest of it. Just put a little spot there so I know where the center is once I line up the stencil. So I drew up a very dodgy one of those curvy stencils that everyone seems to use. I've put some eye holes, four, five, six, seven, eight. Obviously the eight's gonna be for when I'm doing the big eyes, but so I've got an eight mil. I'll go, I'm gonna go four mil pupil, a five millimeter iris. That black super glue actually worked really well. I've given it a, a quick sand with the 240. You're probably not going to be able to tell, but quick sand with the 240 is coming out quite smooth. Left a black spot on my finger, obviously, but that'll peel off. All right, let's taper up. I'm going to actually tape up the hardware on this one instead of putting it in after, like the last video. See if that helps. Obviously, take it off right before you epoxy it, but. Uh, there he is all taped up. I don't know how much difference that's going to make, but I'm going to try it, see what happens. Starting with Wicked Opaque. Probably should tell you what I'm going for, actually. It's going to be... I'll call it Shad-like. Might try and actually replicate the... No, I won't do it exactly. I'll do something similar to that one I showed you at the start of the video. The test lure. <clears throat> All right, start with white. I don't know why, but this camera keeps going into autofocus lock. All righty, next color up. Pearl black, pretty much nearly all over except for his belly. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring it down, I don't know, about there ish, and down to his tail. Oh, 
next colour is going to be one of these little game airs. Electric blue, still on the base coat. Black's still drying a little bit. So I'm just going to put a little hint, sort of starting from where his gills would be, around to his belly, and stopping. Just so it comes through under the scales, not visible through the scales. So the whole premise here is to keep it as tight as possible. Nearly everything under this you're not going to see after I put the scales on. It's hard to tell but it's on there tight. First colour going on is going to be a chrome, and all the colours are going to be over the chrome lightly. This stuff sprays, but this stuff sprays super well too. It's real thin. <clears throat> Actually, while I got that in the brush, let's bring some eyes back. Go silver around the pupil, silver iris. Chrome, technically. It's nothing special to them so far. Alright, so I'm going to spray this thing with that chrome paint pretty much right down to its belly line. I'll probably hit it again later with a bit of white to bring it back to white. But for now, it's just full coverage, no angles, no nothing, just straight on. Next one, game air, magic blue. Me spraying that through the fine end of a comb through the scale mesh across his shoulder. sort of see the bars there and obviously over the scales as well should have broken up the bar pattern a bit so next up I've got three different golds polish gold glorious gold well yeah, the third one's not a gold actually it's that brassy brass I reckon he's gonna be on the shoulders this one I think this one will be the belly lower in the body anyway then I'll put some sort of lateral line All right, the brassy brass so I think I might do that color as a lateral line and I'll do a charcoal I'm going to do that as a lateral and we'll come back with the charcoal. It's like a, I don't know, it says brass, it's more like a rose gold. Alrighty, bit of gunmetal up on the shoulders. So I've got that gold belly, the, the brass lateral line, gunmetal shoulders. I'm going to go at an angle, like literally shooting along the side. It's 
rip this mesh off, I'll have a look. And blue comes through nicely on his belly. Let's make it or break it here. Try and do some some uh, gill plates. Now just wicked white, opaque white. I think I was focusing a bit hard there because I totally stopped talking to everyone. <laughs> so I've done the gills, done a bit of gold up in the top, a little bit of blue down in the bottom corner. Not the best looking gills in the world. Put a big gold spot under the shad dot. Hot orange? Where's that going to go? Going to do his eyes and just going to put a little spot under his chin. So those eyes got the the black pupil, the chrome iris. I'll give him a shot of orange. So, just that silver foil tape, chrome backing. It's all I'm using. Pretty good looking eye. Now right, we'll let that set up and we'll mix up some clear coat. Mix a small amount of this it's an interference purple. The tiniest little amount into the clear coat. Just starting to put the clear on, just starting to go around the, the bib gently. That's going to do him. are out of the dam. First time I've been to this spot. Looks alright. Looks like it's nice and deep straight off the bank so potential for fish. Yeah, I'll chuck his on the chest and we'll start flicking a few lures. So he floats. Extremely hard, hard to film bloody diving lures, obviously, because they dive.
And guys, it's me heading home. It's a nice day out on the lake. No fish, unfortunately. That lure swam pretty damn well, though. I'm happy with that. Didn't see too many snakes, which is good. <laughs> Expected to see a few more, but... Hey, shame time now, dinner time. It's pretty dark. Looks pretty light on the camera, but it's getting pretty dark. Sunset's here at about 6. I think it's about quarter to seven now, so you just have to imagine how dark it is. <laughs> if there's anything you guys want to see me try and make, I say try because I don't know whether I can make it or not, but if there's anything you guys want to see me make, chuck it in the comments down below. I'm willing to give anything a crack. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in again. See you on the next one. Catches.